Good evening, everybody. So we live in a world where technology is all around us. And the software that runs all this technology is constantly needing to be updated. It's constantly having new features and additions added to it. And we can see this in, you know, our cell phones needing software updates constantly. Our Windows computers constantly having to go through updates in order to have the latest security patch applied. And these are constantly being updated because if there was no ability to update the software, then anytime you needed something fixed, anytime you needed a new feature in that hardware, you'd have to replace it. And so there's firmware updates out there that allow you to have bugs fixed and also have new features added. And tonight, I want to walk through the easiest way that I have found to update the firmware for all your devices in your Victron environment. So let's get started. So the Victron environment can be made up of multiple components, whether that's the inverters, the solar charge controllers, the bus bar system, or the brains of the system. And depending on what you have, each device could have a different way to update the firmware in it. The Victron MultiPlus inverters behind me, they run off of the VE bus protocol, and they have to have a direct connection into the inverter and then you can utilize the Mark III to USB to plug into a computer to then be able to update the firmware. The solar charge controllers, if they have a Bluetooth connection, they can have the firmware updated using a mobile device running Victron Connect, and you can push the firmware updates that way. The Serbo can auto-download the firmware or you can plug the firmware into a USB device and have the firmware automatically update when the servo is restarted. So each one of these things has something different and it can take time if you have to update each device. So why can't there be one place that would allow you to update all the different pieces of firmware for each device that you have connected all at one time? And there is, and that's in the VRM. So the place that you can go to in order to see what devices have firmware updates is under this device list on the left-hand side. We've seen this before. So we, it lists out all of our different devices that we have connected to our environment. And in the past, we've used this remote VE configure option right here to be able to remotely update settings in our MultiPlus 2 inverters. But if we scroll down a little bit further, there is a firmware update section. So if we hit that button, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and pull the entire environment for all the different connected devices. It's going to scan their current firmware versions, and it's also going to reach out and find out, are these devices on the latest firmware? And if not, it's going to give us the ability to be able to update each device. And so actually, this is the second time I had to go through and do this. The first time, the screen recorder didn't work. So I actually had to go through and roll back these devices you're seeing listed here so that I could run through this and re-record it. So, uh, spoiler alert, the firmware updates work, and you do have the ability to roll back if you need to. So that's a, a, a huge plus, and rolling back is just as easy as updating. So we can see here I've got five different devices, and four of those devices need their firmware updated. But before we get into that, I want to click on this Remote Firmware Update Manual. And so this manual is going to give you some necessary information for updating the different devices, uh, including a demonstration video. It talks about the different requirements needed, different compatible products, how it works. And then this section 2.5 is kind of an important section because it talks about some big notes on updating firmware in general. We can see right over here, there's not a lot that can be said about firmware updating. Newer is not always better. And don't break it if it works. 
So their main advice is to not update a running system unless there's problems with it. So coming back to our list, we can see again, we've got four devices that require updates. And so the first one is our Lynx shunt. And so all I'm gonna do is hit update device. And what it's gonna do, you're gonna see it here on the screen. It's going to upload the firmware to the device and then it's gonna install it and then that's it and it's done. And so you can see how fast this one's moving. I mean, 65, 67, uh, and 80% already. And then boom, it's done. And after each time that it updates the firmware, it's going to rescan the devices and basically update that list of connected devices. And so our next one in our list is our solar charge controller, our 45100. So we will hit update device. And while this is updating, you can see here the screen on the 45100 changes to update or active to let anybody know looking at the screen that the firmware update is being processed. And we're at 70% already. It's writing the updated firmware to the device and that has already completed. It is very quick. I mean, it's so much faster than having to go through and open up the Bluetooth for every device and then wire in the Mark 3D USB device into the, fur into the inverters. So we're down to the servo right now. We are on 3.01 and there's 3.12 is the latest update. So we will update that. Once that it's finally loaded the firmware, I believe it'll run through and reboot maybe twice. So there you go, firmware installed, rebooting. And so while it's rebooting, it tells you on the screen, it might take a minute or two while it reboots and reestablishes its internet connection. And you may end up seeing this error. And that's all because the servo is still rebooting. It's still finalizing that internet connection to be able to send the data back up to the VRM. And if you look over my left shoulder right here, you can see the dashboard is back up on the display for the servo. We finally got our listing back up for the devices and we're now to our last set of components which is the inverters the inverters can take a little bit more time you have to be aware that when you're updating the firmware for your inverters you're going to lose power so just be aware of that uh, let people know that the lights are going to go out while you're updating the firmware so we'll come over here we'll hit update device so here's our first prompt they want you to really understand what you're doing. So the new firmware file is gonna be uploaded to the device. It is going to install the firmware. The device will reboot, but it tells you you're gonna lose internet connection and it's okay because it's designed to be done on off-grid systems. When you update the firmware on these inverters, they get reset back to factory defaults for their configuration. And then the config file of your original settings is downloaded. You open up VE config, VE config will automatically update that configuration file to the newest firmware version, I guess. And then using the remote VE config tool of the VRM, you'll push those changes back up. And so they want you to understand that's what's gonna happen, confirm it, Next one, make sure to switch off PV inverters. That's your grid tie inverters. They want you to make sure those are turned off. I don't have any in my environment. Confirm a GX device is not powered by the inverter because the inverter is going to be rebooting. And in my case, the servo is powered directly by the bus bar. So I understand that. And then VE bus BMS and digital multi-control. So if you have a VE bus inverter, or the digital multi-control, which is, it's like a separate remote control, primarily used for uh, RVs and for boats as well. Uh, if you have both of those in place, they're telling you, you need to unplug those before you run this update. We don't have any of those in my environment, so we're gonna hit okay. And then the last thing is, you know, be aware that there's always potential for something to go wrong. If you're doing this remotely, you might end up having to send somebody on site to reboot something, to, to do something. There's always that potential. So I understand and confirm. 
and now it's going to run through its normal update like we saw with the other three devices. And as I said, this is, you know, the longest update that's going to happen. And so we're to the point that we're going to be writing the firmware to the devices themselves. You see the lights just turned off on here. So if I step back, you can see we've got some of the lights on one inverter. So it's probably writing the firmware to this one right now. This one will get done and then you'll see it switching over to this one here. So now it's switched over to this one. It'll finish up. And then again, this is going to end up loading its original defaults, which means that since AC input is connected, it's going to default to that connection as its shore power. And it'll probably start, I believe they actually turn the uh, charge current down because you never know what's going to, what these are going to be connected to. And so we've got the notice system has been updated. It's now switching off awaiting reconfiguration and it's prompted us to save a configuration file, which contains all the settings that we had before the firmware update. So we will save that to our desktop. We now have to go through, open that file and you're going to see it opening. And then you'll see this converting at the top and it'll kind of flash a couple of times saying that it's converting give you a prompt, there's no assistance in the device. And so here we go, file conversion is complete. Close the VE bus configurator, save the merged file when you're asked, and then send it to the remote system. So we will hit okay. And I'll come in here and show you that it has my prior changes, you know, my old assistance. Because by default, it wouldn't have any assistance at all. So we'll close this out and then we close this and then it prompts us a merge of settings after firmware update has been performed. In order to complete the process, we have to save it. Do you want to save it? Yes, we do. And then it appends underscore merged to the end of your file name. So we'll save it back over the desktop and our last step coming back over to the device list and go to our remote VE configure. It goes through, it scans the devices in the system and we have an option to download or upload. Well, in this case, we want to upload our changes select our merged file and it will go through and push all those changes up. And so when those changes come up, we should see some lights flash here and then it'll be done. And our system has been configured. We'll come back over to our dashboard. Now, one thing when you update the Lynx shunt, it does not have the update to it that the Victron Smart shunt has where it can remember when it loses power. So I'm going to come over to advanced in the VRM and I'm going to look at the graph which shows me what the state of charge was prior to all of our updates. We were at 52%. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to open Victron Connect app because unfortunately you cannot set the state of charge percentage using the remote console or even the touch screen on the servo. And so to do that, you open the Victron Connect app, you switch from the local tab to the VRM tab, and then click on your VRM instance. And we can see here on the right hand side, I've got three devices connected and one is my Lynx shunt. So we'll click on the Lynx shunt, let it load its information, and we'll see the state of charge here is still blank. It takes a minute to get the voltage and the current, but what I want to get access to is this gear in the top right hand corner and then go to the battery section. And so down at the bottom, we've got our state of charge section, but you can't, you can't do anything. You can't click on it and set the state of charge until you set it to 100% first. For whatever reason, it has to have a value there first. So now that it thinks that it's at 100%, we can now click on that value and change it to 52. Hit OK, and now it updates back to where it was. So now we can come back to our dashboard and we can see it is accurately displaying the proper state of charge with all of our firmware updated. So I hope this helps somebody. You know, this is a whole lot easier. I mean, so much easier than having to go device by device to where you just see one list, click update, click update, click update, and you're done. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all stay safe. Stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.